Hey guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and walk through number eight for you. Uh, hopefully this will help. Uh, obviously, if you have any follow-up questions to this, just uh, feel free to ask. Uh, for this one, it looks like they're giving us angles one and two are supplementary and nothing else. So I guess angle one and angle two are supplementary. Okay, uh, So that's just given. Now, it's I can't even really mark that in the picture very well. One is and two are supplementary. That doesn't really give us anything directly. Okay, the only supplementary thing I think we know about is, you know, consecutive interior angles are supplementary if the lines are parallel, but we don't even have parallel lines. So I guess from here, the only thing I can do is look at my picture and say, is there anything else in this picture that I can get that will possibly help me going forward? Um, if you're thinking, you know, uh, you know, one and three are consecutive interior, again, that's true, but I don't have parallel lines here. Uh, five and four are corresponding, but I don't have parallel lines here, so I can't do any of that. I know I'm trying to prove angles four and five are actually congruent, but unless these lines are actually parallel, I can't get that. So the only other thing I think in this picture that we haven't mentioned yet is that two and three are vertical angles. So, I mean, it's something, it's better than nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it there. Angle two is congruent to angle three, and that's the vertical angles theorem. And then you just gotta hope that that triggers something for you. And, and hopefully you can see it. If one and two are supplementary, but two and three are the exact same thing, well, doesn't that mean then that one and three are supplementary? Right, if I literally just replace, you know, two for three, right, right here, I have angle one and angle blank are supplementary. Well, I could put a two here or a three here. I can put a two here because it's given. I can put a three here because I can literally substitute one for the other. So angles one and angle three are also supplementary. And what I'm doing there is I'm doing substitution. Okay, again, if you want to use numbers just to kind of help you in the back of your mind, this, this wouldn't be part of the proof, but just to help you visualize it. Let's just say this is uh, 70 degrees, and angles 1 and 2 are supplementary. Well, if angles 1 and 2 are supplementary, this would have to be 110. But if this is 110, this is 110, and you can see right away those two are, in fact, supplementary. You're literally just replacing the 2 and the 3. Again, I made up these numbers, so don't put that in the proof, but that's just to help you see... Um, that I switched the two and the three. Okay, I took this two and I made it a three. Angles one and three are supplementary because I substituted. Well, now that one and three are supplementary, I can actually start looking at lines M, uh, line uh, M with line N. Line M and N must be parallel because these are consecutive interior angles and these are supplementary. And we have a theorem for that. That's the consecutive interior angles converse theorem okay sorry that's converse there I'm using the converse because I'm actually showing that the lines are parallel at no point where it was I given any of these lines being parallel so M is parallel to N because of the consecutive interior angles converse I could not do that until I've concluded that 1 and 3 were also supplementary and I couldn't get 1 and 3 being supplementary until I knew 2 and 3 were the same it all follows you know in a, in a perfect logical order now that we've got M and N parallel, right? M is now parallel to N. We've proven it, okay? We can go one extra step here and say that angles four and five must be congruent because these are corresponding and all corresponding angles when lines are parallel must be congruent. That's the corresponding angles postulate. Now I'm not using the converse here because the lines are already parallel from number four. So it's almost as if that was now it's not given, but we can use that as if it's already been proven. Okay, and so from that step, we can go here using just the original postulate simply because uh, the lines have already been proven parallel. Okay, so the key step, honestly, is probably this one. Okay, using this to get you here is probably the hardest part. I think most of you probably looked at this and said, oh, those are just going to be corresponding. The problem was getting these lines parallel in the first place. In order to get these lines parallel in the first place, we needed those two angles supplementary. Okay, hopefully that helps. Uh, let me know if you have any follow-up questions, and I'll be happy to help out. All right, I'll see you later.